All right, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how I'm starting to find real advantage usefulness in my with my iPad as part of the uh, composition process. Um, and I really do mean like composing, uh, not just not not performance, although the iPad has always been great for capturing scores and uh, playing uh, without having to faff around with printing out printing out PDFs or anything. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean sort of uh, score preparation. I really mean composition. And uh, before the iPad, uh, before I realized how useful the iPad could be, here's how I, here's how I work. I write, first and foremost, pencil, paper. Um, I like this pencil, which is the Retro 51 Tornado. It has a thick lead, a 1.1 um, milliliter lead, which is quite thick. Um, I also do like, uh, I use my pencil sharpener and uh, bloody chaos here. Um, oh, here we have uh, the black one pencils. This is a particularly attractive pencil that they make. But I like the lead that they use for that. So the uh, the feeling of pen on pen or pencil on paper is just immensely satisfying. And uh, uh, I have hundreds of pages that look like this. Uh, there's a stack up here. Can you see that? This is a stack I found in uh, an old binder that's probably 15 years old. And there's probably a dozen more like that of, you know, stacks of 20, 30, 50 pages, all covered with scribbles. Because that's that's what I do. I don't finish things. I don't have the discipline to take ideas through to completion. Um, and when I do, they tend to be short pieces like those Volca inventions. I'm working on the Korg Volca. Um, or uh, a set of seven preludes I just finished uh, for a friend of mine who's going to perform them. Now, you don't know that yet. I haven't talked about it, but I will in the next next few weeks. But again, pieces that take one, maybe two pieces of paper to write in its entirety, because that's about as far as my method would, would support. Now, this is something I've been aware of and really working on for the last couple of years, is my ability to think in larger structural forms. One reason why I started doing the Messian study was because I just wanted a bit of discipline around uh, compositional technique. Uh, not necessarily Messian's compositional technique, although I particularly like Messian's compositional technique, but just a bit of discipline. Uh, it's been too easy for the last 20 years to say I don't have time to write, and by that I mean I don't have time to finish larger pieces. But that, my friends, is bullshit, uh, because I have plenty of time to doom scroll through Facebook or uh, uh, waste time in, in many other ways. That may be a different, a different topic. But let's say that my previous approach has been right, uh, stuff that looks like this. Uh, this is all stuff taken very much from the piano. I, I love the feeling uh, as much as I love the feeling of pencil and paper, I love the feeling of moving keys with my hands, perhaps more than I love the sound of the instrument, although I think the sound of the piano is one of the great gifts that we have in our, um, in our global culture. So I would then, uh, if I were to finish a piece, I would take something that looks kind of like this, put a box around and I say that looks like an idea and I would uh, believe it or not this is actually a second rewrite of, of what I worked on um, they initially yeah everything's on the floor what do you expect they initially look um, more like Actually, that's a bad page to be on the floor because I think 
yeah, that's the start of the third movement of this piece. So this is a piano sonata, and I do mean sonata. It's a little bit unusual for me to start with a structural idea, uh, but I have something in mind, not, n not so much the sonata form as the sort of mid 20th century American compositional style, like Carl Ruggles, Sessions, Samuel Barber, you know, this really kind of intense um, contrapuntal romanticism that is that fits well within the idea of a theme, the idea of ideas. So uh, what I've got here is basically the draft of the first movement with a couple of notes for the second and third. Now, what I would normally do then is I would uh, spend a lot of time writing and, and, and not really thinking about things in paper and then putting them into Sibelius. Uh, but in that process, kind of losing the um, not losing, avoiding the challenges of transitions, of large scale relationships, what goes well next to each other. So I wouldn't have to think about that because I kept myself in miniature. But I would put it into uh, into Sibelius. For, and it, that would look like um, that would look like this. Right, now you can see this is called Finger Lake Sonata, Movement 1, Alternate Version. So it's an alternate version because the first thing I did was just really go line by line in the order that I had it in here. Um, and I got maybe 30 or 40 measures, which I would say is a good core for the exposition of the first theme in what will end up being a, a sizable piano sonata. What I noticed right away in this version is that the theme, which is so this gesture, and then I right away move into this sort of secondary material, which sorry, is absolutely part of the first group. Of, of themes. It's not a second theme, it's related to the to the first theme. But I didn't intend it to be sort of a theme and tail, which is how it showed up, right? Here's a couple of measures of the theme and then the secondary theme and then a little bit longer of that theme, but then here we go back into the secondary theme. Um, if you had asked me what I was going to write, it wouldn't have been that. I would have said I'm going to have theme A theme B and theme A, and then a section at the ending section. And then that's my first thematic group, and I would transition into a second thematic group that would be, uh, let's see if I had A, B, and A, then I would do uh, C, D, and C, with then the, a, a restatement of the ending group. I have sort of this cadential motion in mind that occurs at the end of each thematic group, occurs at the end in a form before at the end of the development, and then it ends at the end of the piece after the recap kind of a coda. But that's not what's here, right? What's here uh, is uh, sort of uh, a, a theme that happens to have a gesture and then a tail, right? The, 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 uh, sort of... Uh... Which is nice, but it's not, not what I intended. So, uh, so the first thing I did was create an alternate version where I sort of grouped things a little bit. You can see I um, have this larger group and then this larger group and then the larger group back and then here's that cadential material. Now that's what then I took to the piano on the iPad. And I'll say again, like playing the instrument uh, is essential for me. I get my ideas at the piano I test them out at the piano. And I don't just mean take a score and play them through and make sure it sounds good. Uh, I've come to realize that the physical action at the piano is really how ideas come to me. And the, the, the craft that I need to work on is capturing those ideas after I've done something on the keyboard onto paper. Then I can take it away and I can sort of scrutinize it and say, well, 
where does this fit with what I want to write? Am I writing a piece for piano? Am I writing a piece for theremin? Am I writing a piece for string quartet? Whatever the, you know, does the idea fit? Uh, and the degree to which I'm able to, on the fly, dynamically capture those ideas in a way that I can then scrutinize intellectually later, that's the degree to which I get better um, as a composer. So I, I, I like to play things over at, at the piano, particularly in this case, because it's a piano piece. It's very easy uh, to export, um, export the PDF into my iCloud folder where the Sibelius folders are, or, yeah, my Sibelius scores are. And then, um, hang on, let me bring up the iPad. And then over on the iPad here, uh, you can hit, click import all these different kinds of, um, oops, kinds of import options that I don't understand. But then right here in files, uh, this is my iCloud drive. There's the Finger Lake Piano Sonata. Here are the two Sibelius versions and then the PDF itself. Now, I already did this. Uh, Fourscore is the app that I use. And uh, four score is great. It's a great performance tool. Um, it's designed for PDF viewing. Um, I've got it in landscape right now, which is dumb for performance. You really want it in portrait. Uh, tapping this, the page changes the screen. Um, I have a little foot pedal, a little Bluetooth foot pedal. Um, and it is just awesome, right? Like uh, most, or not most, but a lot of music that I, I am interested in playing nowadays um, is all uh, PDFs that you download. <laughs> Instead of having to purchase the full set of Cooperin because I want to play Le Barricade Mysterious, or instead of faffing around with my printer, which is always out of ink or not working or whatever, um, I can just download and then use Fourscore. It's really great with um, with my music. This is that piece I was telling you about. It's a secret uh, because I don't. Because uh, what a pain in the ass it is to print double-sided and then bind and then give to people and then they've done it wrong and you have... everybody has a tablet now and Fourscore works uh, on all of them. Um, I love it. All right, so here we are, and um, here's my theme, right? <laughs> First thing I realized, and this is where I wrote in red on the score here, is I I don't like it being up. I think it made more sense having it be down an octave because of that voice leading into the F sharp here. So I said play down an octave. said continue down I this this uh, jet this thing here I always mean in add more um, continue down G to F sharp all right so now that really um, creates the idea still of theme and tail rather than than themes, and this is really the question that's coming up as I play through this this score here. 
um, do I want this um, sort of twidgy? <laughs> Twitchy information, twitchy piece stuff to be like, um, like how would I do it? We could see, you know, here's what I thought I would do A, B, A, then kind of an ending stuff, better transition, and then my second theme group C, D. See, I don't want to be mechanical about it, but this is kind of how I had in mind. What I've actually done instead is more like A, B, A prime, B prime, A double prime, B double prime in smaller sections going on like that through the duration um, to, my second, to my second theme. And I just don't know which I prefer. And the way I'm going to find out is just keep, um, keep playing it. So, uh, what else did I write here as I was um, as I was playing around? Here I wrote "continue up" because I really do think this. Whatever, whatever relationship that secondary, primary, second, you know, second theme within the first theme group, whatever relationship it ends up having, um, it works better not as a two-group bit, but as a, as a sequence. So I learned that by playing it through. When I wrote continue up, what I meant there was uh, continue back. Uh, this was me first deleting, like, I have a lot of repetition. And repetition is fine, particularly when the theme is so... <laughs> It's a, it's a pretty good theme, right? Like the recapitulation. I think when I think about Sonata and, and the aesthetic I want, what I really mean is I want at some point for that theme to return. So whatever happens to get away from it, I want it to return. And it's just going to blow your socks off. Like it's, it's just going to be this huge recapitulation and like double octaves and, you know... <laughs> Just like it's gonna be awesome, uh, but you don't need to hear it a million times at the beginning. So what I was thinking here is, uh, I like this more subdued statement of that material. I love that dissonance there. It's one of the few times, you know, I have this very characteristic. Um, theme, but then here, in this one instance, you have the really, which makes me think that I should actually um, do that more than once. That's what I mean when I put a block that says times two. Anyway, carry on. is being sort of the third time that you hear this material. It's been going on for, a, at this point, maybe three minutes, and it's been intense. It's obviously dying down a little bit because it's bleeding into...
and then there's a bit of noodling around and my second theme comes up and it's a very different second theme. Okay, so then I take this marked up score and I go back to Sedalius and I make the changes. And, and if it's a question of like moving sections around or um, correcting notes or, or repeating some sections, that stuff is really easy to do directly in Sibelius. Sometimes these blocks, um, like uh, like these intersection bits here, just become a bit more than what I can note, and then I go back to paper and um, write out whatever it takes, a page or two or whatever. And uh, by approaching the score each time at the piano and saying, Really, what is this? Does it does it belong here? Does it go together? Does it need to do it again? Should it not be there at all? Like some very basic questions, not complicated theory questions about pitch set or harmony. Um, not yet. There may be questions later that are more specifically. Um, I make changes because uh, I don't like the voice leading that that, that happens. Uh, but here, it's more like, is it? Is it congealing? Do I need a transition? Am I, uh, am I putting the material together in the right sequence? Like, and, and I learn that by, by playing it through and then either as needed going back to the, literally back to the drawing board or making my edits directly in Sibelius. And the advantage for me of using Sibelius is that it forces me absolutely to, to finish it. Uh, Sibelius is not that for everybody. Uh, for some people, Sibelius, uh, for me, it was just a hurdle for a long time. Pain in the ass. I'm still very slow in it. But you know what? So I'm slow and idiosyncratic. So is everybody. There's no right way to use Sibelius. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, but the putting it in the score and then having it available to play through allows me to force myself to confront the questions that otherwise, if I left it like this, um, like I love writing like this. Who doesn't love writing, writing like this? You never, I never finish. You don't ever need to finish. And I want to finish a couple of things. So that's a lot. Um, at least it's a long, it's a lot of time, maybe not a lot of useful material, but let me know what, what you think. Do you use four score? Um, do you use it for performance? Do you use it for um, editing? Do you, you know, the back and forth with, Sibelius. Do you use Sibelius on the iPad? I don't. I have it, but I find that I fuck things up on, on the iPad that I don't when I do it in the MacBook. Uh, and then uh, how much do you do in paper? I, I think most of us use a lot of paper and then go into Sibelius, but maybe when I say most of us, I mean most of us who are, you know, old. Anyway, keep your wits about you. Thanks very much.